Hello and welcome to another episode of Supplier Diversity and Small Business Economic Impact Report. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining me for another weekly report. Um, so for this week, uh, definitely a lot of news that I think everybody should be aware of. A, a lot of uh, good, interesting news that's definitely going to impact the future of your business um, probably in, in the next quarter or so. So um, I do want to begin by saying we are now in the fourth quarter of of the fiscal or not fiscal or of the calendar year. So for most businesses, when you're talking about B two B, when we're talking about in that aspect, it's a little bit of a downturn. So not not downturn, but kind of closing out the year. So by now you probably have already connected with a large portion of the companies or businesses that you want to do business with. Um, you guys are basically like closing out those contracts and, and really preparing for next year. If you're B2C, um, now it's in, in this October, um, November, early November time frame, you're pretty much um, gearing up for the holiday season. So, you know, these are the next couple of weeks where you're pretty much busy preparing for, for what's next um, as we lead into to the next couple of couple of quarters or a couple of months. But um, in keeping that in mind, um, <laughs> as I say that, I'm actually going to start off by talking about what happened last quarter and kind of how that affects everyone moving forward. Uh, so to begin, as you can see on the screen, uh, GDP growth of 3.5% marks best two quarter strength stretch, excuse me, stretch in four years. So um, we've been talking about this for the last couple of months. Uh, so if you're not aware of the second quarter, which had about 4.2% GDP growth, uh, was the largest in since 2005, I believe. Uh, so for the past all, um, all just over a decade, um, it's it's it was a huge huge growth uh, portion in that second quarter. Now, a lot of that had to do with obviously tax cuts really just hit at that time, so they got a boost there. Uh, tariffs uh, really helped get a boost in that quarter as well because people were trying to buy purchase things before the tariffs hit. Um, so the second quarter really had a lot of a lot of things going for it. Um, now when the GDP estimates were going on for th for this year, uh, basic or for this previous quarter. Uh, what you had was a lot of estimates um, for from the conservative economists. You had somewhere between, I want to say about 3.8 ish to 4.2 percent. Kind of that was the estimate for conservative um, economists that I that I could take take a look at. Um, and then you had for more of the the independent liberal ones. You kind of had somewhere between like a 3.2 and like 3.6. Uh, so as you can see with this one, um, the independent slash liberals were, were right in terms of that 3.5 percent uh, piece. But but again, every Everybody still is, is saying that that this um, you know is, is pretty good and and even and again I'm looking at pretty much on a on a whole everyone's saying that by the end of the year we're still going to have a lot of three percent growth uh, for the year which is which is pretty good um, now you know just just a couple of things to point on I already mentioned you know since this hasn't happened since 2005 um, I do want to show you a chart real quick just so you can kind of see the the change from pre previous quarter at an annual rate, our rate uh, se seasonally adjusted. So as you can see, um, pretty good. Um, uh, biggest two two quarter uh, kind of back to back rates since, as you can see, 2014 when when the, the growth rate was over four percent. So um, in two back to back quarters. So, um, but but overall, as you can see, since since Trump, uh, the Trump administration has, has been in office, we've been consistently solid here um, now if you look at the last couple of couple of years for the Trump or, or for the Obama administration there were some highs and there were some really were some really really highs and really really lows uh, but we're, we're pretty much seeing consistency here and, and high consistency at, at that now you know what does this mean over the next quarter slash uh, next year now again we're basically seeing what I'm seeing on an early standpoint here is that uh, some estimates we're looking at basically somewhere between three, three point two, three point three, three point four percent for for the fourth quarter. So we're, we will probably have a little bit more of a of a drop, but uh, that's not too bad when you're looking at trying to finish the year at three percent. Um, but then going into next year at 2019, that's when we're seeing a lot of uncertainty. Just just period. And I'm going to get into that into a second in terms of why that is, but. Uh, 2019 is going to be a little bit unpredictable. So if you can, if you're, if you're a small business, especially if you're doing B2B, 
um, now is the time to try to go after those contracts and get in, into those budgets because 2019 may be unpredictable. And a lot of things may be changing for that year. Uh, now, in saying that, uh, let's talk about that unpredictability. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we're talking about the Euro uh, Europe. Uh, Europe's economy uh, is, like, Europe's economy is getting hit from all sides, and and this may be kind of a a start or or a glimpse into what um, America may be dealing with in the next in the coming coming year, 2019. And you know, I'm not going to get into this, you know, specifically, but but there's a couple of things that they mentioned in this article that I want to pinpoint. Uh, one of the pieces is that a lot of the automotive companies over in in Europe are getting hit because of uncertainty, right? We're talking about America and China when they're going, um, essentially they're going through a trade war right now, um, which is really hurting um, people's ability to export and import uh, certain items. So because of that, a lot of the, a lot of the, the automotives specifically are kind of hesitant um, and, and worried about their next move. So because of that, they're being conservative in, in their decisions. Um, when we're talking about doing business, if anyone has any facility in in the UK, people are starting to um, or considering closing the those down. In particular, leading into the second quarter. Um, if you're not aware, you know obviously the Brexit vote happened, but the Brexit actually is closed out and goes into effect in March 2019. So it seems like it was only yesterday that the, that the vote happened, but it's been a couple of years now. So um, since it's going to hit March 2019, and they've literally gotten nothing <laughs> done in terms of the trade negotiations. There's a lot of uncertainty in that aspect as well. Um, on top of that, they've had uh, Europe has had a slowing down in terms of their just their overall growth. Um, so they're at around low two percent right now. Um, so just just a lot of conservative decisions being made currently um, to ramp up for 2019 because people are uncertain what's going on there. But um, with that uncertainty, that's pretty much the same uncertainty that's going to be hitting America pretty soon. So and, and again, this is. Stuff if you're exporting, importing, or you're looking to get into that, um, especially if you're trying to connect in like China or Europe, um, especially those those particular um, spots, um, there there is there are some major concerns there that you should uh, be aware of uh, moving forward. Um, next up for this week, uh, stocks resume slide, pulling S and P 500 briefly into a correction. Um, so let me go just go straight to the chart so you can see. Um, one thing that I want to note is, you know, if you invest it, just, just being very, very general here, obviously there's some stocks that are up, uh, despite uh, the generic downturn, but if just being general, if you invest it, you know, money, January 1, 2018, you are now losing, um, money, uh, currently. So huge, huge drop off in the past couple of weeks, um, from a record high for the year to just lower than what we started at so and, and again this, this goes down to the one of the things that, that i'm constantly to be completely honest not a fan of is, is when people try to take credit for the stock market and everybody does it right it's not just you know the current president um past administration both sides all sides <laughs> have taken credit for a great stock market when it's up and then blame who you know insert person or company or organization or whatever, um, when it goes down. Um, the reason, in my opinion, why you can't take credit for the stock market increasing is that it, it's, in a glo it's a global entity, if you will. So it reacts from things that are happening around the globe. So if Europe, if something happens negative in Europe, the stock market's going to drop, even if everything is, you know, great in America or if everything's great in, you know, China. They're, if China's hitting record profits, president of China can't, or chairman of China can't, take credit for it because or prime minister I think um, well, let's go back to america but the president of america can't take credit credit for, for that because even if things are going you know fantastic and perfect in america if things hit europe and, and other you know africa south america things hit those negatively then the stock market is going to drop because it has to affect for these companies that have global brands and, and global presences so um, that's pretty much what we're seeing right now. Not nothing necessarily going wrong in in America or North America, if you will, but um, things are hitting other places and, and it's affecting the the stock market pretty heavily. So that's that's pretty much with kind of with, with that. Not nothing too specific. Um, you know, obviously they, there were some hits from like the tech sector. I mean, a couple other sectors. The earnings weren't as you know high as people would have imagined, but 
uh, just pr pretty much on a, on a general feel. Like that's that's kind of what's going on. Be aware of that. Uh, I've, I've seen some, some places where they're uh, saying, hey, you know, um, I think Wells Fargo just said that now's the perfect time to buy stocks. I'm, I'm not a, you know, expert in that field. Uh, but what I will say is, you know, take into consideration what I mentioned before and kind of plan up appropriately or, or accordingly. Now, let's get off into, you know, some other things aside from the economy. Uh, Walmart India launches entrepreneurship program. Um, so this coming up year, I think this is going to be the third time that they do this. Uh, they're going to Walmart is going to connect with entrepreneurs in India. A uh, hundred of them, 40 are going to be um, have like in-person uh, classes and then 60 they're going to do it virtually. But basically, uh, they're looking to continue their initiative um, of promoting um, female entrepreneurship in, uh, throughout the globe. So let's just gonna drop down real quick. Uh, so as you can see, the, the Global Women's and Economic Empowerment Initiative, um, even though it was a five-year initiative, initiative started in 2011, there's something, that's something that they're still trying to continue. Uh, we're going to pretty much see this kind of go forward. So, yep, as you can see in India, it started in April 2016. 93 now they have 100 this year and uh it's pretty much going to keep going forward so if you know if you're in india i do know some um, some people in india do kind of check check out some of my uh some of my stuff so it is an opportunity and if you think that that you know is something that's good for you definitely check it out uh, lastly um just uh, i always kind of like to have some type of ratings or a little bit of fun when it comes to rankings uh, so this is just kind of another one. Um, top 50 cities for baby boomer entrepreneurs. So I'm just going to, you know, touch upon the top 10 and then the bottom 10, which the bottom 10 is going to be pretty interesting, actually. But for the top 10, um, some of the states that you, you could probably guess, which is California and Texas, has a nice little present. California has three cities. Texas has two. Uh, but another one, Tennessee, um, actually has the same number of cities as Texas in the top 10. So pretty found that, that pretty interesting when it comes to <coughs> um Good places for baby boomer entrepreneurs. Um, and then lastly, and again, I'm just going to touch upon this real quick. Uh, it's something you can definitely check out yourself. But um, when it comes to the bottom 10 places for or bottom 10 cities for baby boomer entrepreneurs, uh, interestingly enough, Florida is actually has four cities in the bottom four or, or in the bottom 10 of cities for baby boomer entrepreneurs so i just thought that pretty interesting when you you're always hearing about you know this is you know great for retirees and whatnot um although it may be great for retirees it clearly may not be as good for to start a business so maybe it's where you go after you've sold your business or after you're you're done managing the day-to-day -day places for your business um so thought that that was just pretty interesting and wanted to you know mention that as well but um with that being said, you know, as always, definitely appreciate you listening, checking us out. And um, if you have anything that you want to add or suggestions, feel free to let, let us know at Supply to News, and we'll definitely try to incorporate that, you know, as we move forward. Um, so with that being said, thank you for your time. Um, please like, share, subscribe, um, you know, send us a note and do, do all that great stuff <laughs> um, as you, as you, uh, you know, move forward throughout your day. Um, so with that being uh, with that being said, I've said that like three times, but um, have a great day and take care.